Yay, media group. So this lady has her Great Dane. The thing looked like a horse, a mini horse in the aisles. I remember. And we're, everybody's moving around your dog in Sephora. And you're just taking it as if it's just a little dog that you can carry in your arms. But it went to the bathroom in there. Yeah. Hey guys, episode 70 here. I'm wearing this sweater jacket if you're watching right now, pretending like it's cool outside. It's actually cool at drop off, but I'm just wishing for fall. I just want it to be fall so I can wear all my sweaters. Yeah, I love fall. The leaves are starting to change a little bit in our backyard, but I'm kind of summery today. And we're filming in the morning, which is we're kind of all over the place. Our last episode was at nighttime and now it's early morning and the kids aren't here and we don't have to worry about anything. We can just let loose. I know. I love it just because normally when we're done recording, I'm texting my neighbors, where are my kids? Who has them? Where are they at? Are they out front playing in the cul-de-sac? Are they in somebody's backyard? So it's nice to get it done in the morning. And two, it feels like, you know, with you not working, you probably, you are still doing your regular routine, getting up early, working out. And then you probably feel like, oh, I got a job. I'm doing my Together Miss podcast. Yeah, we do this twice a week. And then we just started uh, our work podcast for with all the DBL crew. Called, How did that go last night? It was pretty good. It's called uh, Daytime Talk After Dark. And we filmed a live YouTube episode. So every Tuesday now at five o'clock mountain time, we're going to be live for an hour with the whole crew. Did it feel like daily blast live again or was it like are you talking daily blast live topics are you guys more relaxed i'm assuming they kind of sprinkled in some you know everyone brings their own thing to the table when it comes to daily blast live right so obviously tori talked about politics and i really wasn't (laughs) trying to talk about politics and there's no producer you know it's a little it's obviously less informal than daily blast live. Cause you could say whatever you want and nobody's like, Hey man, maybe you should, you know, oh, you know, yeah. it's like, nobody really told me what to say on daily blast live. That was the best part of working there. Cause our producers were so awesome. They just let everybody be themselves and kind of molded them. So we, that's why I think we all gelled as a, is a cast, but yeah, it was just fun. It's just kind of loose. Everyone's the same. We already know what everyone's going to say anyway, mm-hmm. you know? So it was cool. We were missing Erica. She's in New York. Uh, for uh, what, saving the world. Yeah, she's doing week? she's always doing something. She is always doing something. And then you did which only Denver people can see it, correct? Yeah. Sam's new show. Right. You what is it called? I do talked you, to, it's just nine news at three. Nine news at three. So yeah. you did her segment, but you do a lot of DIY projects you're gonna show on there? Um I don't it depends. You know, they they just got off the ground this and week. So, so we'll see how that goes. Like if they have me on more. I mean, like I said last week, they're kind of a it's a skeleton crew, you know, compared to Daily Blast Live. So I don't to be honest with you, I think it comes down to money. You know what For I mean? Sure. And I you're gonna be on the show Friday. I'm going Friday. I'm talking about my weight loss journey. Which and, is tomorrow. So this yes. is Thursday, yeah. And Dr. Coley is going to be there. I love Dr. Coley and Sam. It's actually it's I did a segment what a month ago month and a half ago on um uh my weight loss journey right. but i got overshadowed by the olympics so people didn't see it <laughs> yeah they re- they re-aired it though oh did they yeah because bayard our buddy from my old job cbs uh oh, wrote me he and he's did? like i think yeah i, I think love- it was bayard and he's like someone sent me a picture if it wasn't bayard what it's up bayard he's a cool dude but anyways uh yeah someone sent me a picture like look who's on my tv And it was your, so they re-aired it, uh, one of those Fridays we weren't on. Yeah, so it just feels so comfortable. Like, Sam is such a professional, and if you don't know, Sam Shocker, she was the main host on DBL. She actually helped create Daily Blast Live, and she's so good at what she does, because she is a journalist, isn't that? Like, her background is journalism. I'm not sure. I don't, what makes you a journalist? Like, do you have to get a degree or something? I think you do. I I could be wrong. I think you do, too, but journalist is such a vast term right now because none of us are journalists Uh, maybe sam was i don't think she is you're more i put you in the category as like extra entertainment tonight like you're just talking celebrities um what's going on the gossip well you're just a host and journalists are supposed to be non-biased by the way that's why i say 
it's kind of on a spectrum because there isn't a journalist out there today, or there's very few, I should say, that just give an unbiased opinion. I mean, all those people on CNN, all those people on Fox, MSNBC, they all claim to be journalists, but obviously they're obviously leaning left or right. I saw a video, not getting in politics, I saw a video this morning showing presidential debates way back when, right? Yeah. And it was so professional. And like going back to Ronald Reagan. Well, they um, had respect for each other, right? Yeah. And it's so different now. It's so different. Barbara, they showed Barbara Walters. She was so young. And I only know Barbara Walters as being old just because she was, I don't even know how old she was when she passed. She had to be like 80s, 90s. And, uh, I went during the debate, I had to take Lawson to Target. And (laughs) if you ever need to go to Target, go during a presidential debate. I felt like it was just me, Lawson and the coworkers. They were all just laughing, cutting up the coworkers at Target. No one was in there. And on my way home, any house that I could see on the street, the TV, yeah. All you saw were presidential debate, presidential debate going down. And I told Lawson, I was like, this is kind of awesome. Just well, walking good, people, through. Tar- people, uh, no, it's good. Yeah. But I mean, this is definitely going to be an election. Yeah. I'm kind of just looking forward to, to it be being over. over with. Well, yeah. I feel like people are making decisions after like corporations, businesses, everybody's waiting to see what happens with the election just because it's, um, I mean, definitely we feel it with groceries. Um, yeah, our mortgage. Everything. I've talked about yeah, that. Yeah, all like, of that. I wish they'd address some of that in the presidential debates instead of like- I was waiting on the health insurance. To, yeah. That's what I wanted to hear was, pre, uh, was health insurance. And I wanted to hear about the economy. Those are they more- didn't touch so, on that. No, I felt like it was more, from what I watched, it was more, not even the United States. They were talking about- yeah, a lot Other of foreign countries. policies and things like that. A lot of stuff that was over my head. And full disclosure, I went golfing earlier that day. And Jeff had beer. And I had some beer. So it, it helped the election go down. Otherwise, I don't know. If, if it was like on a, if they were matched against like Thursday night football, I don't know how many people would be watching that debate. But I'm sure still a lot of people would be. But I'd be watching football, especially since I'm not in that business anymore. anymore. Well, I said that to you the next day. I said, are you so happy you don't have to give your opinion on the presidential debate, because if you were working the next day, that would be the first thing. Oh yeah. We talk about you and Tory fighting. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Politics just drives people, you know, we're at a point now where you can't even talk to somebody if they're on a different side than you, or if, even if you're in the middle, like me and someone has an extreme opinion, there's no conversation happening there, you know? And that's what, that's what I think is sad because you just automatically, I said the same thing last week, just about people in general, get labeled with something just because you're not with that political party or don't agree with that. I might have different issues than you because I have two kids that are in school and my mortgage is going up and grocery. Maybe I have different issues than what you're looking at. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person for whatever I want to vote for. It's my vote. Let me, you don't have to get mad at me about it. Vote the way you want and I'll vote the way I want. One thing with nine, so nine 11 was yesterday and still like seeing the videos, it makes me emotional just as if it just happened. Right. Yeah. And I had posted this thing about the phone calls, people calling their loved ones from the plane And they were so calm. It was so different. It was just so different. Like, hey, uh, terrorists are taking over the plane. I hope I see you. I'm like, what? Like, they're just so brave and so calm. But my whole point, I was telling Jeff of talking about 9-11 was, I remember how united we all were. I was only 15 Mm -hmm. years old. I was in ninth grade. And this sounds dumb, but I didn't know what Twin Towers were. My family had never been to New York City. I knew nothing about the Twin Towers. And I remember being confused. I was in ELP. I was in Mr. Kluwer's ELP class. And they came in and said that a plane had hit the Twin Tower. But I didn't, you know, our phones weren't like you didn't have news on your phone. I had a cell phone, but you could barely text. It was like doing the ABC, that type of text. Oh, yeah. And still... 
I was just like, wait, what's going on? I just didn't really understand. And I was young. I was a kid. And but after 9-11, I felt like this country was so united. Everybody was together and everyone came together. I remember MTV because I used to always watch as I would get ready for school. Rock the vote. No, I would. uh, No, I don't remember that. I would always watch music videos in the morning on MTV. TRL. CMT. I would alternate as I was getting ready and switch between those two. And I remember that was like suspended. They just only played music videos. There was no content coming out. It was just like silence just to pay respect for everyone that lost their lives. And now we couldn't be more divided as a country. There couldn't be more hate for people. And, and there was something so bad, a tragedy is nine 11. And then people now just hate and want to threaten each other because of who they're voting for. Yeah. We were unified. I, I mentioned that the other day too. I'll never forget how unified everyone was out to help each mm-hmm. other, you know, despite all the social cultural differences, we were America. Yeah. You know, and that feeling, I mean, it's more, you were younger. I was like 20. You were in college probably. Yeah. I might've just graduated college. So that's a feeling that like the younger generation, sadly, I don't know if they'll feel that depending on where they live or what their upbringing is like. But just for me personally, I feel like we are so divided. So at each other's throats. And the sad part about it is, is that I, no matter where I I do genuinely have a love for everybody across the world until you get on my bad side, then I don't like you depending on whatever reason, but they'll never feel what that felt like as a country, yeah. you know, which is sad. Hopefully they do when they get older and we kind of fix our differences and maybe after the election, no matter who wins, things might die down, but yeah, it's uh And I think sad. it's so, I really don't think we'll ever be united again. It's always just going to be a battle. I hope so. Cause I think people are tired of fighting. You know what I mean? You got your far left, you got your far right extremists, no matter what. And, and I think people are just getting tired of that rhetoric, you know, like online I don't think in so. their daily life. Yeah. I think people are just walking away from conversation, which is sad, right? Cause you're never going to get to hear the other side because that person's definitely not willing to hear it. And at this point, I'm not willing to hear it. If I know someone's like do, talking like that at a, no matter where I'm at, event or in the neighborhood or whatever, I kind of just walk away. I don't want to get involved. You know what I mean? I don't want to get involved. Because you know on it's either trouble. Side. Yeah, it's just trouble. And I think you're just out to cause trouble. You're not here to fix anything. If it's a Friday night and you're at a football game, whatever, and you're bringing up politics, it's like, man, I'm at a football game. What are you doing? You know? Right. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk about this. I might've mentioned this before, but. I was, I feel like when I go on these long walks, I get all these ideas and (laughs) I, sometimes in my head, I, conversations come up in my head and I'm like, remember to jot that down for the podcast. It just depends on what music I'm listening to the vibe, like all this stuff. So the other day I was walking and it was a beautiful morning. It was so nice out. And I'm not even joking. There were, I was going up this hill in my neighborhood and there were eight of us all spaced out. Everybody had a dog except for me. Okay. Oh, you're just walking? I'm walking in the neighborhood, taking a walk. Yeah. And it was so beautiful that morning. That's why everybody was out, but everybody's walking their dogs. Okay. Okay. Except for me. Okay. When you have a dog, okay. Not everybody wants to pet your dog. Not everybody loves your dog. Don't take up the sidewalk. Like, as if I had a pet, you move over to give the other person room. So you guys pass each other on the sidewalk, right? Yeah. You just stand in the middle of the sidewalk and just hold in your dog. And then I have to go all the way in the grass around you. Nobody cares about you and your dog. I think people have relationships with their pet, pets. I really do. Like, like in sexual L- relationships. Oh, totally. When you- <laughs> In LA, people totally have sexual relationships with their pets. I love dogs. I love dogs. Yeah, you better. But your dogs, there's just some people, this is my thing. When you have no social awareness of what's going on, it's just rude. Like, other well, people, they, I, they would probably think, and I'm just taking the other side here, they probably think you're rude for not walking around them. 
That's what they would probably say. So I got it. The sprinklers just came on. So in the grass is wet. So I had to go down and around, around you and your pet. No social awareness, just kept walking. And it wasn't just me. It was other people who had dogs because the dogs couldn't pass each other. They had to go around. You take your dog by the leash and you hold your dog tight and you you pass. You don't make everybody go around you. That's so rude. I, you know, what's funny. Do you ever go to a party with like where uh, people have dogs and they're like, Hey, could you take your shoes off? And you're like, dude, your dirty dogs were jumping on the couch after you just went outside. It's yeah. It just, <laughs> it just blows my mind. I could not have a dog that shed. Our kids keep asking us for pets and I'm like, our next door neighbor has two golden retrievers go pet those dogs like I think when the kids I don't know why right now I just can't handle another responsibility on my plate but I think when the kids get a little bit older and I have more time I might want a dog no my friend wow I watched no conversation about that no I watched my friend's dog and I had the dog come to our house to see how the boys would do I was like guys we gotta take the dog out you can do it. Oh, definitely. They're, that's why I said when they get a I was like, older. no. And then when it snows here and the dog gets all wet and then tracks snow into your house. No. And then when the dog passes, then you. Oh, that's the worst. Then you. Yeah. It's a family member. You feel yeah. like that passed. It's so sad for me. I'm like, no. Then if on top of talking medical bills, if something's wrong with the mm-hmm. dog, then you have to pay for that. Then um, if we go out of town, which we never go out of town, but if we did, we have to find somebody to watch the dog. Yeah, It's just, it's too much. I love other people's dogs. And like I said, I do love dogs. It's just courtesy. And like I said, when we, when we lived in Los Angeles, I will never forget Jeff and I were in Sephora at Third Street oh, Promenade. We might exactly. have shared this story. We, I think we have. And if you don't know, Third Street Promenade is one of the touristy areas in Santa Monica. It's so busy. Well, bef- pre-COVID it was. I don't know how it is now. It's right by the Santa Monica Pier if you've ever been there or seen pictures. So that's First Street and then Third Street is like a, a mall, like a long couple blocks of just mall that's, you know, outside. Yeah. So this lady has her uh great dane great Dane. the thing looked like a horse a mini horse in the aisles i remember and we're everybody's moving around your dog in sephora and you're just taking it as if it's just a little dog that you can carry in your arms but it went to the bathroom in there yeah oh i was like what's up you're not yeah to no part. i was gonna get there oh i ruined the punchline i thought you forgot about that no 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 i can't remember if it was one I think you- peed yeah but i was like and then but it was a like co-worker a in there and then a co-worker has to clean up yeah. your dog pee i don't like that or when i lived in la you're getting your hair done and you got your dog and it's got pink hair on the top and you have it in a stroller really those are the people that have relationships with their pet well i think there is something like dog people they communicate better with like other dog people You know what I mean? Like we have kids. I remember, again, I think we've revisited this story, but when Lawson was just little and we were living in an apartment building, Mm -hmm. you know, and Lawson could barely walk and your dog is twice, literally twice the size of my kid. I don't want your dog sniffing my kid. He could barely walk. And one, like if Lawson, he doesn't even know, barely know how to walk, pokes his eye or gets near his mouth. Get your dog on your side of the elevator. Not everybody, Um, like you said, wants to pet your dog. There was, I remember one dog in, they either had a pit bull. I think it was a pit bull. I'm like, I don't care. And Lawson, no, I don't know if I've ever shared this. Do you remember Lawson was two maybe three. I want to say he was like two around that time. That family, we were in Cherry Creek. They had their, it wasn't a Doverman, a Rockweiler. It was a Rockweiler tied to a, whatever, tied to a tree. And remember, I was like, where's Lawson? We were grabbing drinks. We were sitting outside on the patio. Margarita place. Yes. And Lindsay was with us. Yeah. 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 And I go, where is Lawson? And Lawson was running to the dog because he loved dogs and that family 
started screaming, no, don't let your son touch the dog. And I remember I could feel my I could feel myself getting mad because I was like, if you don't know if your dog is going to bite somebody, why would you have right. that type of dog tied to a tree on a busy street in Cherry Creek where kids are passing by, families are passing by? Why would you even risk that? Leave your dog at home. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. People are going to get upset about that because they like care. their dogs more than they like kids. You know, those now, are their I get kids. older people that have a dog and they love their dog and they've lost their partner and they, their kids are moved out. And that dog is like right. their life. That is normal. I'm not talking, I'm talking about people that just buy strollers and buy dog carriers. Yeah. Irresponsible dog owners is what we're talking about. Not dog owners, irresponsible dog owners. Yeah. And that, I'll never yeah. forget that with the dog. And I remember I got so mad at that family. Well, doggone it. So we're kind of going on the ranting train here. Yeah. I got a new one for you. Oh God. Something I did. Yeah. Uh, what? Because you know what? I didn't figure it out till just recently. Okay. You leave that back porch light on. Oh, you yeah. turn it on all the time. Because it's dark in the, it's dark in the backyard. And for a long time, I kept thinking I left that on. I'm like, how do I always forget to shut this off? This has been going on for weeks now. You leave the light on. It's pitch black in the backyard. There's and you a leave flood it on. light back there. I put a light back on. So when someone steps up to there, the light automatically goes on. You don't need to leave that. No, other light the, on. the other light is for the middle of the yard. That flood light is for the bottom deck and it's got a camera on it. So that's for the one side of the house. This is for the middle side of the house and our neighbors don't leave their light on. So it's super dark. So anybody could do something. So I leave that light on so you can see all around. You can't, first of all, it's a light like uh No, that's the upper deck. This, this light right here by the steps. Yeah. That's that light. It's not for the deck. I've turned it on for that light by the steps because it brightens up our backyard. Oh, it controls both? It controls both. Oh. I learned that because I had to have Big Sexy change it. And Big Sexy was like annoyed by me that day. Change the light bulb? I had him change it. You were in Georgia doing that movie. And that's how I figured it oh, out. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Every morning I wake up because I wake up early and it's still like dark. And I'm like... Did I leave that light on again? And it was driving me crazy. And now I'm like, no, Jordan's doing that. Yeah, no, I don't do it for the upper deck. I don't care about that. It's for by the steps. So if somebody was coming up, there's a bright light on them because oh, neighbors have cameras too. Gotcha. I'm always thinking. You know what I thought last night? I was laying in bed, but I was too tired to get up. Uh... I was like, did Jeff, he came in after me and you always forget to shut the garage. And I was like, did he shut the garage? Cause I always check to make sure you shut the garage. Did you go downstairs? And no, I was too tired. I didn't get up. Really? I didn't get up. And it made me laugh. Listen, Leighton talks in his sleep. Leighton talks in his sleep, farts in his sleep, and is always just <laughs> like doing stuff. So he get got up. <laughs> last night. I don't know what time it was. I was so tired and I put him to bed in his room, but the boys always come and find me. And when I wake up, it's always all three of us in the bed. I wish I would have bought Lawson and Leighton King size beds because it always ends up being us three in the bed. That's why I'm saying that. There's a lot of movement at night, throughout yeah. the night <laughs> in, in our house. Yeah. So Leighton walks in last night and goes, hi mom. He goes, hi mom. And he rubbed my back. And I go, hi. And he goes, it's Leighton Schroeder. And I was like, what? I go, hi, Leighton Schroeder. Lay down and go back to bed. And then he just went back to bed. And just like, he must have been sleepwalking or something. But then when I got up this morning, it was dark. He was in his room. And you and Lawson were in your, in no, Lawson's Lawson room. Lawson moved on his couch. And then Lawson, I was sleeping, came in our room. And like, he just comes in, the kids come in in the middle of the night and like, I don't know what I'm thinking. I mostly take like those nighttime gummies. So I'm probably a little high. And uh, then they just stand on the edge of the bed. I'm like, dude, what are you doing, buddy? Like lay down. And then they're like, they say something crazy. And then I don't know if I'm crazy and then they leave or they lay in the bed. I don't, it's just wild. Our house at night. Oh. We should get like a, what do you call it? Like fashion you know, when you film something, but it's like, there's people all over the place. <laughs> all are, the time waking up. Unless I, if I don't take something, I'm, 
I'm pretty much up. And last night, Lawson, he kept kicking and moving. I was like, okay, bud, you got to move. You got to go. I was like, you're keeping me up. It doesn't matter if you have a king size bed or whatever. They always find a way to like touch your body. You know what I mean? Like their leg has to touch you or some, or their body has to be next to yours. And it could be a giant bed and I'm all the way on the end. And then they're right next to me. I'm like, move over. And I have to build a barricade. Layton's got to be either on you or tucked in or he's all spread out. But you know, what's funny looking at them the other day when they were laying in the bed, uh, Lawson did something and I was like, oh my gosh, I had a flashback. He looked just like how he did when he was like six months old. It's weird. Had that face. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, he looked just like how he did with his hair cut shorter. I even, I noticed that too. Like even his feet. I don't know why. Like I could just see his feet. I'm like, those are like lo- they were or Lawson's little feet. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know, just by telling their feet, it's so weird. And Leighton still, when he was a baby, he always would turn both his hands in like to my chest and he would always stick his hands down the middle of my chest like in between my boobs like the cleavage I think because it's warm and he always did that and now he's six I mean he just turned six but when I pick him up if he falls asleep on the couch he still tries to do that with his hands and fine, but he's so big now, there's no way he can do it, but he still always tries to find a way, like sticking his hands in the cleavage. Yeah, they still resort back I know, to their- cute. I love when uh, <laughs> late Lawson's getting big now. He's tall and I don't know how much he weighs, but he's seven and he's getting big. So when he'll like fall asleep on the couch and we have to bring him upstairs and he- he just goes straight up. Like, you know, you and want him so, heavier. Yeah. And it's, he's taller too. So it's like, you're ba- You're trying to balance him. Like, will you just lay down on my shoulder so I could carry you? Cause I usually have like a drink or something of water and bring it upstairs. And he's just straight up. Like, so you have to like, ba- <laughs> you have to balance it. And then Leighton weighs just as much as he does, but he's a little bowling ball. Yeah. But you know what drives me nuts? My, I don't know if anybody else's kids do this. When my kids are tired and they're trying to avoid going to bed, it's always, I think I need a snack. I think I'm hungry. I'm like, no, 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 no. It is 830. I always tell them you eat before you go to bed. Yeah. And then I'll walk away. And sometimes I find empty raptor, raptors, wrappers, and they go downstairs and they sneak and they eat snacks in there. They do it every single time to me. We got to tighten up the ship or whatever you, I'm whatever trying the term, to term is because it, it's wild around here at night and we need to get them in bed. God bless you parents who have young kids and that are, they're in bed at seven 30 and you have a glass of wine. Like, you know, you're living. We have never life. been it's, able yeah. to do that. Lawson never. I used to tell the pediatrician all the time. I would complain about it. I'm like, this kid does not sleep. He never sleeps. Yeah. Our, we've never been like that. Like lights out. This time, it's like the kids are just everywhere. And I'm that's always our fault. fighting that's with our them fault. every single night. No, I always try. I always try we to see. get them. And now I'm like, now Jeff's like, why is everybody always screaming? Everybody's just, it's like nine o'clock, whatever it is, 830. And I just want to relax. I got everything done. And just people are just screaming at each it's other. It's a war over here. Ugh. Because that's, that night, Leighton, fell and cut his chin open. Same thing. They get hyper. It's like at a certain time they get hyper. They won't lay down. And then after the 10th time of telling them, you guys need to lay down, you guys need to go to bed. All like they just don't listen. And then I lose my cool after 10 times. I'm like, okay, guys, I'm asking you nicely. I have asked over and over again, it's time to lay down. And that's why that accident happened with his chin. They were hyper jumping up and down and they do that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. Um, we sent out just a couple of quick updates. If you guys are still with us here, we sent out a couple winners, uh, packages. We did Pam, Pam in, uh, North Carolina. Yeah. And Pam Brooks emailing you your, I wrote you a little note. Um, Brooks emailing, I sent her your email and she's emailing you the gift card, the $50 gift card to your email. 
So you should get that. And then there was somebody in California who got the Tumblr and AG1. They sent it to us. We signed the Tumblr. I mailed that out. Right. And then we still couldn't find gingers. So gingers, right? Yeah, we can't find gingers. We have no idea. And she's he, she is not responding. So we need to pick a new winner. Right. So maybe we'll have something else coming up. Just some little silly trivia. And or that was like that. for the Olive Garden, Amazon and uh, Starbucks gift card. So we'll come up with something again and we need to pick a new winner. Yeah. So that. we just want to give you guys a little update on that. But thanks for listening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Downloading, subscribing, <laughs> tagging a friend. Jeff and I have to go to Home Depot and buy new appliances because he's doing a DIY in the bathroom. We'll see how long it takes before we start bickering. Yeah, Jordan didn't like it, but I think it, it's going to come out really nice. I so think I'm once we get new fixtures because it looks dated and I just, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's go spend money without a job. Bye. Bye. <laughs>